Medline is a major literature database for the biomedical and health sciences. You can get to Medline from the library homepage, library.du.edu. In the database's search box, type in Medline. We have access to Medline through several different database platforms. Today we're looking at Medline through PubMed, which is a free database from the National Library of Medicine that includes both Medline plus additional citations for life sciences articles. Accessing Medline through PubMed has two major benefits. Number one, it's free, and you'll still be able to search this interface after you graduate. And two, it contains extra tools such as the Clinical Queries Search Interface, designed for busy clinicians who are specifically interested in clinical studies that focus on therapy or diagnosis, systematic reviews, or medical genetics. Let's start by searching for the protein malate dehydrogenase. Putting the name in quotation marks forces the database to search these two words as a phrase. The first two things to note about our results are how many results we got, over 10,000, and how these results are sorted by date. You can see it's sorted by most recent right here. If you prefer to sort by relevance, you can sort by best match right here. Since we haven't given PubMed a very specific search term yet, I'm going to leave it sorted by date. We've gotten over 10,000 results, so let's narrow down our topic by focusing on protein folding for this particular protein. I'm going to type in malate dehydrogenase and folding. The capitalized AND tells the database to first find all the papers that mention malate dehydrogenase, then to find all the papers from that subset that also mention the word folding. That got us down to 156 results, so let's scroll through our results and see if anything looks interesting. And I think number nine looks interesting. If we want to read the full text, we can click on the DU article linker icon here. That opens up the library website and allows us to link out to full text. If you're in PubMed and you don't see the article linker, you're probably searching the generic version of PubMed you can get to by Googling the term PubMed. Don't forget to start at the DU Library website to get access to DU Library full text. If you find this article interesting and decide to focus your search on the thermostability of this protein, thermostability and thermophilic will be good keywords for your search, so let's save them for later. Here's a librarian search tip. I keep a list of possible search terms and searches in a Word doc or a Google doc so I can cut and paste the terms into a new search or a new database. We can also scroll down and see the subject headings that this article has been tagged with. If the article has been indexed for Medline, it will be tagged with MeSH terms, which is short for medical subject headings. MeSH terms are designed to help you narrow down your search. For example, the MeSH term hot temperature fits our search for thermostability. And all of the articles in Medline that describe high temperatures should be tagged with this term. So let's click on hot temperature to add this MeSH term to our search. The Add to Search feature is actually intended to help you build a new search, so we're suddenly searching for just the term hot temperature. And this is another reason why keeping your search terms in a Word document comes in handy, just in case the database ever eats your search. Let's add all of our search terms related to high temperature together with the word OR. The OR tells the database that we'll accept articles that include either word. Then we put parentheses around that to tell the database which words the OR applies to. I'm also going to replace the last few letters in thermostability with an asterisk. The asterisk tells the database we want all of the words that th start with thermostab, thermostable, thermostability, etc. Finally, let's add the name of our protein back into our search. And here we have our new and improved search ready to be deployed in PubMed. Our new search gives us 260 results, which is a nice size set to work with. On the right-hand side of the screen, 
Scroll down to find your search details box. This shows you how PubMed is interpreting your search. You can see they've spelled out all of the word permutations we've searched with our asterisks. When possible, PubMed will automatically map your search terms to the appropriate mesh term, and you'll see that mapping in the search details box as well. Once you're familiar with AND, OR, and the use of parentheses, you can modify the search you find in the search details box. If you want to go back and rerun a previous search, your search history is located below the search details box. On the left hand side of the screen, there are various filters that allow you to narrow down your search. We can narrow down to articles published in the last 10 years. Under show additional filters, I personally find the sex and age filters helpful for clinical studies. Note that clicking show here doesn't add this option to our search. It just makes it show up in the menu. So if you actually want to add the filter to your search, go ahead and click on the name of the desired filter. In this case, this filter wasn't helpful. It left us with zero results. So you can clear an individual filter in the left-hand side of the screen. If I want to clear all my filters at once, I could do that at the top of the screen here. Note that if I don't remove a filter, it'll stay in place for future searches. You can see I'm running a brand new search at the top of the screen, and my last 10 years filter is still in effect. Thanks for watching our PubMed tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact your science librarian.